Going into business, everybody says, don't do it with your friends, let alone your brother-in-law. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ecom Growth Show. Let's go. Let alone your partner. <laughs> hey, ma'am, I'm not your partner. <laughs> Oh yeah, just kidding. Well, in some sense of the word, I am just not a, not a loving not. Well, in, in some ways, I love you too, but just yeah, we're it's not like that. Yeah, we're happily married to other people, right? That's true. Yeah, but you do bring up a good point. That's the common thread among business people, and I think a lot of people have such bad experiences mm -hmm. with a partner that they make this general rule of like, oh, just don't go into business with friends or family or anyone. And I think, the, I think the reason, too, is the backlash is so painful when it's with somebody who's so close to you. And it doesn't just disappear, you know, if you go into to business with your brother-in-law, which we are brothers-in-law, yeah. and say, you know, things go sour. And hey, we, I'm and glad we, you knocked on wood there. <laughs> um, there's no getting away from each other. Yeah, we'll still see each other every Sunday at family gatherings and just be weird. Yeah. So this is something that we heard on replay over and over from um, just the world around us, you know, people advising us before we went into business, like, are you sure you really want to do that? And it just kind of goes against the, a, a few common principles. And, and one of them is you don't go into business with friends or family, right? That's exactly it. So guys, we're excited to dive in this topic a little bit today because we're going to talk about that what it's been like going into business with each other, but we're also going to talk about the value of mentors. Yeah, we, we prefaced it by saying we ignored them, and now we're going to tell you how much we love them. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we didn't ignore mentors, we just ignored um, the, the common theme of, of yeah. what we just said. Yeah. Totally. So let's start by saying, uh, why did we end up going into business together? And maybe, you know, some of the things we were excited about in that and potentially, you know, any challenges that we had with that. That's a good start. So I think for me, it was just because I was jealous of your creativity. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want Robbie to exceed, <laughs> exceed without me. So I better join him. <laughs> uh, I think you're joking, but <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. But it was this natural thing where we were both really passionate about videography at the time, mm -hmm. and we we're kind of in the similar journeys of being in commercial fishing, getting married, starting mm -hmm. to have kids, and we started thinking, you know, how can we how can we build something outside of fishing that's more sustainable for us and our families? Yeah, and I I would say like probably my favorite thing about being in business with you is just, and you've said this to me as well, is just this idea that you're not, you don't have to be alone in it. Yeah. And I think if I did have to do this journey alone, it's been, there's been enough hard things where I don't think I would still be here today just because, you know, when you're in business, there's just a lot of stuff that come comes up and, um, you know, we kind of talk about business and life and professional and um, personal life kind of all being intermingled. And oftentimes a lot of our breakthroughs in business had to do, you know, we're kind of rooted in a breakthrough in our personal life and, yeah. and vice versa, because the business obviously provides really good things, you know, for you to thrive um, personally. So um, my point in saying that, if I can. <laughs> no, you, your point was, is you'd be nothing without me. <laughs> is that where you're going? I'm just kidding. No, I just think. Um, not feeling alone though. That's, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a huge one. And I, I feel the same way where it's so much easier to go through these challenges with someone, uh, you're pushing, you're fighting for the same thing because mm -hmm. in this town we grew up in too, there's not a lot of people branching out and becoming entrepreneurs in like the, the tech space, so to speak. Right. So that, that enough would like by yourself would feel pretty alone in that, but having yeah. each other, we're always bouncing ideas off each other. We're kind of setting our mindsets on the same thing and, mm -hmm. and encouraging each other to stick to the path and believe in those things. Uh, and we have other people that have, that have spoken to that as well, but we're always able to go back, debrief together and kind of stay on the same vision uh, and, and really encourage and help each other stick to that track. 
I think in business, um, your identity is constantly under attack because not only are you trying to grow and morph into something different, but you're having to combat all these challenges to get there. And so naturally you're already kind of like growing, kind of changing who you want to be. And a lot of people go into business, not, not necessarily for the money, but, um, for what that actually means once the money's there, whether that's, that's status or freedom or an ability to feel more love. Like it's, it's more based in these human desires. And so like, as you're going through this journey, naturally you're going to be attacked in some of those areas. And, um, you know, I think about if we've ever had a a really challenging time where maybe, uh, like an employee has, um, turned against us or, or has left us or felt like they were, we, we wronged them in some ways. And, um, I think it's been really helpful to have somebody to remind, uh, to remind each other like no like we, we show up we do this with integrity like it's it's still a business it's okay if they want to go and and do their own thing and like that's part of them fulfilling their dreams maybe they're not a part of our vision but you know just being able to remind each other like number one the path that we're on and you know who we are as people <laughs> yeah totally and, and just one. reminding ourselves that you know there is going to be challenges and oftentimes those challenges are like the uh, predecessor toward growth or reward. Yeah. One thing I'm thinking about too, as you're talking is it seems like over the years when someone's feeling, when one of us is feeling down or like defeated by something, I feel like the other one's kind of on the opposite plane, Yeah, you know, where it's very rare where we're both down at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's super helpful. I see this in my marriage too, where, uh, we're in different seasons at different times. And sometimes in business, it's like something happens and affects me differently. And then it might affect you mm-hmm. based on your personal life or where your head's at. And you're like, no, dude, it's all good. Like, we're going to get through this. Here's what's going on and vice versa. So it's this good, like give and take to where if it was probably just me alone, there'd be a lot more ups and downs. And I'd have to, uh, I don't know, debrief with someone else, but it's nice being kind of in different spots and we're able to pull each other up to, to where we're supposed to be and, you know, back to the big picture and, Mm -hmm. and pull out of the weeds and and get rooted back in the vision. Totally. And so I think, you know, we can both agree that, um, one of the best things about being in business with, with a friend or somebody close to you is this idea that you're not alone. You can support each other, um, through hard things. You can celebrate good things. On the flip side, you know, if I was going to advise somebody, um, you know, as they're maybe considering a partnership with somebody close to them, you know, maybe a, maybe a brother, brother-in-law, stuff like that, sister-in-law, sister, I would say one thing that comes fairly natural to us, but that we maybe take for granted is just having like um, pretty good, like we're pretty lighthearted, which allows us to have uh, pretty good boundaries. Like we're not... We're not chilling at a family gathering, like open up shop talk. We're not like, (laughs) we're not like talking about all the things that stressed us out at the office when we're hanging out with the wives and kids and stuff like that. And so I feel like one thing that I would um, tell somebody if they were considering going into business with somebody close to them is just having pretty good boundaries and, you know, having a little bit of a, like I, I started by saying, uh, everything is intermingled personally and professionally, but you also need to have boundaries and, Again, when we're saying stuff like that, obviously the answer is balance and that's the easy answer to everything, you know, yeah. mentors are not mentors, you know, boundaries are intermingling, like all this stuff, it, it comes down to balance. And mm-hmm. I feel like bringing that lighthearted attitude, a good sense of humor into it, um, really yeah. makes it easy. And so that's something I would tell, tell people what, what's something like on the, uh, maybe challenging side or potentially well, negative say, side. Another good thing to have too, when you're exploring this is humility. Mm. You and I rarely try to take credit for something good that happens in the business. You know, we're always pointing it back to each other, yeah. back to the team. Uh, you know, so I think that's a big one where we're, our egos aren't super involved and we don't base our identity on how well the business is doing. Yeah. And so that keeps us rooted in humility and, you know, understanding. I, I shared this story on another podcast, but understanding literally everything could go away tomorrow in the business realm, but that doesn't affect 
who we are and what we're doing. And it helps me, you know, like the boat rolling instance, that's the, that's the Mm -hmm. story I shared the other day where it's like all of a sudden it was all gone. And if my identity was rooted in how good of a fisherman I was, (laughs) <laughs> I would have felt like the big, the worst, you know, the worst human ever. Yeah, totally. But it wasn't. I was able to pull above that. And that's the same with our business is our identities aren't rooted in it. So we're not trying to, you know, take credit for the good things that are happening. Yeah. There's actually two, two quotes that I just came across in this book that I'm reading that kind of um, remind me of what you were just saying. The first one is victory has a hundred fathers and defeat is an orphan. That's John F. Kennedy. And then there is no limit to what humans can accomplish if they are willing to share the credit. Dang, dude. And that's Ronald Reagan. I feel like that's a, a such a good piece of advice is take your ego out of it because most of our growth can be attributed towards forming valuable relationships where somebody knows something that we didn't and maybe they're better at something than we did. And if you come into that with an ego and you want it all to be you, it is going to be you. And yeah. you're going to be limited to your own strengths and your own weaknesses. Yeah. And so you really need to be able to pull your ego out of it so that you can create a collaborative environment that cele- celebrates people and actually empowers them to do what they're good at. And then that's yeah. where the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. Yeah. And that's what we expect of our team and everything, because we don't want people solely taking credit for the growth of the company because it's so much a team effort mm-hmm. that works in unison that it's it's so so much better to realize that and not say oh the growth is solely because of Mm -hmm. my job yeah you know doing sales or running marketing or rolling out ads for our clients it's it's everything that works together another thing i was going to say too is just having the similar core values is so important too Mm -hmm. if you go into business with someone and you're you're just your core values are completely different i don't see that lasting very long yeah that is nice and we've kind of co-created in that way you know what our vision is what our vision, um, you know, what we want from the business. Totally. That's something we've kind of worked on together. And I could see how if our motivation was very different, it would cause a lot of problems. Yeah. So what was cool, too, about us coming together in this endeavor is that we ke- we both came in with no knowledge or experience, but we had the relationship, which carried so much power in itself just in the fact that we weren't alone. But kind of the next step of that is, again, surrounding yourself with um team members people who are who are better than you at certain things or have strengths that you that you don't have and maybe can see um blind spots that you wouldn't be aware to well then the whole nother iteration of that is surrounding yourself with mentors so that you're not alone in things that you just have no grid for totally you know whether that be strategy and you know i would say you know uh a huge debt of gratitude that that we owe toward one of our mentors is just teaching you and I mm-hmm. how to maintain and keep a healthy relationship. Yeah. And so our relationship isn't something that just happens. This is actually something that we like meet weekly with, with a counselor and he's actually yeah. challenging us in areas where maybe we do have blind spots and we'll literally be on a call with this person who he's a life consultant. So he cares about our business. He cares about our marriages. He cares about our re- relationship Yeah, and he'll say, now, Robbie, is there anything you want to say to Daniel that <laughs> that's feeling uncomfortable or scary to say? And and he kind of creates a safe environment for us to have conversations that wouldn't normally yeah. come up, you know, if we didn't have this mentorship. And, you know, it can happen, you know, at the life consulting side. But then we've also engaged people, you know, with business strategy, people yeah. who have been in the industry years and years. And so we get a leverage. Uh, um, Patrick was saying the other day, you know, as we were talking learning through experience is the slowest way to learn. Yeah. I so, actually taught him that you taught him that. Yeah. Just so, just so we're clear. <laughs> Set the record straight. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, so, it's so very true though. Yeah. And when you can leverage, you know, a mentor to help you expedite that learning curve, it's only a good thing. Dude. I remember that's where I learned this lesson in business Mm-hmm. because I remember when we started out, we floundered for that first year, made a hundred grand in the business, paid 50 K salaries. Someone you and I went negative cause we bought a bunch of camera equipment <laughs> <laughs> <It's> all <laughs> in, for dude. that whole year. But we learned a lot of valuable lessons. I'm not downplaying that. But at the end of that year, we said, 
we're going to hire a mentor that's already done this, that's already built a seven figure agency. And once we did that, boom, within six months, I remember putting that $5,000 on the credit card yeah. and it was so scary because we had no money in the business. We were, I don't even know if we really fully told our wives the price or not. <laughs> we're just like, hey, we're getting a mentor and threw it on a credit card. It was really scary. Mm-hmm. I remember the feeling of like, okay, we're going into debt now for this. Like this just got real. Mm-hmm. But within six months of that, I think we we got our business up to like fifty thousand dollars a month. Yeah, which was a massive turnaround, just a big shift. Which and, yeah, which was beyond our initial goals with ever even starting the business. It was yeah. We're like, if we could just get to twenty k, you know, take home ten k a piece, we'll be good for life. <laughs> We did really hundred percent profitability. Yeah, just no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but all that to say is, I learned such a good lesson in in the importance of having a mentor, having someone that's been there before you. That I started applying it to other areas of my life, mm. my marriage. You know, with our relationship, like you just said, like there's mentors for for a lot of areas of our lives outside of just business, but. Where I learned the lesson was when we applied it to our business and just saw like the fruit from it right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was super, super awesome. And um, I feel like one thing you've been really good at is being able to sniff out whether or not a a mentoring relationship is being valuable to us or not. Because we've had mentors that, Mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't good. And consultants we've engaged where it actually... um, slowed us down yeah. or, or distracted Distract, us. Yeah, totally. And so I guess I would just ask you, how are you so good at sniffing this Dude, out? My wife, bro, she calls me a hound dog because <laughs> <laughs> I can sniff anything out. <laughs> no, I don't know, man. I think sometimes I, I'm able just to, to back up, see the whole picture and not mm-hmm. be so focused on what they're telling us mm-hmm. and see it from a bigger perspective and be like, well, I don't know if we actually need to build an organic YouTube following. Mm-hmm. to hit these goals it sounds good he sold us on it but then i'm like wait a minute i think just having a thirty thousand foot view sometimes mm-hmm. and backing up from what the mentor is telling you and asking yourself you know is this going to serve me or is this this like busy work because he doesn't know what we should do either yeah so that was one example but i think a lot of it honestly just comes down to a gut feeling or intuition you know that i can't yeah. really fully explain and we're very we're very different in that way too because um you're really good at like the big picture stuff and for me i felt like i was all in and committed to a process you know regardless of if we were going to see fruit from it for um you know right away or if it was going to take a long time and so i think that is something too a, a value that comes from you know a partnership yeah is having people with an yeah. entirely different um different strengths and skill sets which thanks for saying that and i want to echo that back to you because with i'm i'm very not process driven so if i have a good idea it's like hard for me to implement it and make it happen where like you early on were the one that could build it all out Mm -hmm. structure it right you know repeat it onto our team and everything Mm -hmm. so that was really good to be able to use each other's strengths like that because i would just be thinking big picture all the time and then you know just kind of (laughs) <laughs> go away if it wasn't for you implementing yeah dude so i have an, a, an exciting way i feel like we can bring this home so that was you know we started this march 2016 so five, yeah four, five, five, five some six few years ago few years ago and so now we're at a point where you and i are both learning to basically reinvent ourselves again yeah. we now have a, a coo who really manages all the day to day and you and I are both stepping into a season of really being the visionaries and we're trying to get into a place where we're we're living in a zone where what we do is affecting where we're going to be you know two years from now yeah 100%. and so it's a it's a total shift and it's a very exciting thing and if you guys do these things if you if you go into business maybe there's a partnership there but you know there's definitely you know this phase of gathering people around you uh getting a vision a vision outline and people on board the right people in the right seats you start building momentum put cash in the business and now we're in a place where we're um 
you know, 10, 15 times beyond our wildest dreams in terms of revenue. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a massive foundation for growth right now. We're over invested in our team and basically we have a launch pad and we're in a place where we're, we're out of the weeds and we're getting vision for our next season. And it's just a super, super exciting thing. And the reason I say that is I just want to encourage you guys that if you're just getting started, like you're literally doing the process, you're literally taking the first step. And I just want to encourage you guys to, to stay in there because we've seen this happen. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, five, six years, that's a pretty, pretty fast time frame to be yeah. where we're at now. Yeah, totally. 40 full time employees built this brand new office. We're loving it, getting yeah. settled in, got a fish tank upstairs. So hundred million dollars in results for our clients, which is pretty crazy to think about generating yeah. that much revenue for other businesses and the lives that has changed. Yeah. And just what comes out of that, you know, they're now hiring people. They're now pursuing yeah. their visions. And a lot of people, you know, business is a good thing. I think there's this, this, uh, narrative that it's like people want to go into business because they love money and that's maybe associated with greed but most of the businesses i talk to exist to do something good for the world yeah. and to know that we've helped generate a hundred million dollars for people to be adding value to the world is it's a very special thing it is yeah dang dude when you said like i have a like cool way to bring this home i didn't believe you until you started talking <laughs> <laughs> that was really good <laughs> So stay the course, you guys. Um, feel free to break the conventional rules, yeah. but always have the checks and balances there. Yeah, exactly. You know, whether that's a mentor or a partner and, you know, go out there, thrive personally and professionally and, and change the world. Yeah. And if you are doing 20 plus K a month in your business, probably the smartest thing you could do is hire Shopanova to explode your revenue. I just want to throw that in there. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. See ya.